Alright, what's going on guys? Trev back again, here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing my weekly review for this week's episode of the Walking Dead television series. This one will be for The Walking Dead Season 4, Episode 6, Live Bait. Alright, and as always, my reviews do contain spoilers, so for anyone who has not seen the episode yet, uh, you're probably going to go ahead and want to watch that first and then come back and watch the review afterwards. So right off the bat, uh, the whole title of Live Bait, um, I don't really know where they got that from for this episode because I didn't really see anybody used as Live Bait or anything of the sort. I mean, it could, I guess, be referring to that uh, new little girl that the governor has sort of, you know, taken the role of like a surrogate father for her. was her name? I think it was Megan, right? Uh, and then there's Tara, who's the other the other daughter, and uh, Don, who was the old man who's now dead, and also um, Peggy, is it Peggy? I think so. So you know, I'm not sure exactly if that was referring to to Megan or what the case may be with that, but. Uh, Whatever, I guess it doesn't matter too much. Just, uh, just saying from the title itself. So, uh, in terms of the episode as a whole, live bait, um, really cool episode. You know, it's one that we've been waiting to see for the entire season, probably, which is uh, to find out all these questions we have of what happened to the governor after he, uh, you know, basically the end of season three, and he had became uh, a team killer and just sort of annihilated most of his team. Um, pretty much as most of us thought, Martinez and Shumpert wouldn't stay by him, you know, knowing what he did, seeing what he did. So uh, I really like the, the beginning where, uh, now this was shown in the sneak peek for last week, but uh, it was still really cool because in the sneak peek we couldn't see that Martinez and Shumpert had in fact uh, left him, just, just ditched him totally. Uh, in this episode we did get to see that, so you know, after the walker goes through the fire and gets burned and um, Martinez comes out, shoots it, and then sort of looks at the governor and kind of gives him one of these, um, you know, you know, like just, just like you know, disgust look, like he's totally disgusted with him and just doesn't know what the hell is going on with him, and it's basically given up on him at that point. It wouldn't make sense that he would stay with the governor after doing that. Now that said, of course, I didn't think that he would happen to run into him. Uh, at that stage, you know. Now, in terms of chronological order and where this is in the Walking Dead universe, so to speak, I, I think it's intended to be so. Let's say maybe at the beginning when so he leaves them at the end of season three, right? And then there's the time skip. During the time skip, it seems like the governor mostly is. Um, do, like all these events are taking place during the time skip, you know, where he he grows the long beard and becomes all scruffy and everything. That would take a while to grow. So I think we would have to say what he was gone for maybe I don't know f four months maybe let's say to grow that all out in the hair and everything, um, something like that. Probably four or five months. We know there was a six month time skip before uh, the characters at the prison, we got to see them again in, in the premiere. So the events of this episode I would think would take place from probably obviously the end of season three up until maybe the premiere, like at this time right now when the governor runs into Martinez, um, our, we're not thinking that's current present time for the characters at the prison, are we? You know what I'm saying? Like, like they're not right now just recovering from the um, the you know the whole infection thing and all that illness that was going around and then we see the governor at the prison gate obviously that would happen later on and this would have to be all of this episode would be leading up to that when we see him at the prison so these events would probably be taking place I would think around the premiere time you know something like that probably or a month within maybe give it a month uh, variation but sometime around when we first saw the characters uh, for The Walking Dead for season four in the premiere. So I would think this is all taking place during that time and of course we see uh, the governor and the other new women that he's with the is it three yeah three yeah three of them right uh, out on their, you know, out on their own, kind of roaming around, and then of course they run into Martinez of all things. Now, for this one for me, 
the most interesting part of this, well, it was weird to see because I didn't think that was going to happen. I thought the governor might run into Carol or somebody of the sort, uh, which isn't to say that later on he, he may. He may still you know, run into her uh, later on. We'll have to see what happens with that, or maybe he'll just straight up attack the prison type of thing. Um, but it was strange to see him run into Martinez. But I guess it makes sense because he would have to have numbers, wouldn't he? Like, he would have to have a good amount of numbers, and, um, you know, those girls by themselves are really not going to, you know, they're not going to put him in a position where he can exact any kind of revenge on uh, Michonne or, or the others from the prison for, uh, well, really, Michonne is the one who did what she did. The one, like, Rick and the rest of the group at the prison, they didn't really do anything to the governor, right? It's, it's really all about her. Merle's dead, so that, that doesn't count anymore. So I would think the only person that he would really care much about, he'd probably blame them all for losing Woodbury, right? Um, because they did take, take all those people from Woodbury into the prison. But I would think that Michonne would be the one that he still is uh, is after uh, and still would want to exact his revenge on. So that's all interesting stuff, really cool stuff. Um, just to talk a little bit about the sneak peek for, for next week, obviously I'll do my predictions video tomorrow. It should be up. Um, or if you're watching this after, let's see, what's today? The um, If you're watching this after the 18th, it's in the channel right now. So after watching this, you can click the, uh, the link for my channel and watch the predictions video for next week if you're interested uh, to hear what I think is going to happen. But that's really interesting to me that, that Martinez would start his own group without the governor there and do the same thing <laughs> that they used to do back in the day, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten months ago. Uh, which is basically, I like this line in this episode where Governor calls himself a pirate. I'm a pirate. And he laughs. And I laughed too at that moment because that was a really clever line because it's like he's got the patch. And I never thought, like, yeah, the Governor's a pirate. I, I never, you know, that never occurred to me. But he is because, you know, pirates would steal from others, right? Would steal gold or whatever the case may be. He's got the long scruffy here. He's got the long jacket and everything like that. All he's missing is a parrot. Um... Pretty much. So you've got him and Martinez has started his own group without him and is the leader of that group now. Uh, you got to think that uh, if the governor is going to rejoin, that will not stand, you know, very long before the governor wants to take over that group. Maybe not at first, but I would think pretty quickly he would be uh, looking to uh, shoot Martinez in the back and, and take his... Uh, take his position as leader of this group because uh, guys like him, you know, guys like the governor, they're not going to want to uh, take flack from somebody like Martinez who really was just a, you know, one of his, his soldiers, so to speak, uh, which is another cool scene was where they're playing chess and uh, she's got the king piece and she draws the, uh, the eye patch on it. So I, I like that. There was a lot of really clever little tie-ins with the governor and things that happened in this episode. It was really, really well written that kind of refer back to who he is as a character and really give him some some presence in you know the current state that he's in but also commenting and reflecting on where he's come from you know before with Woodbury and everything like that and about him being the leader of this huge community uh, I like that he didn't refer to himself as the leader he referred to himself as like in third person you know um, the leader lost it you know is what he says to her right in the um, in that little montage sequence, which was really, really cool too. There was a lot of really cool moments in this episode for the governor. Now, if you like him as a character, I think that uh, you would be the type of person who would love this episode. I personally think he's one of the most interesting characters in The Walking Dead. Um, a lot more interesting than he was in the uh, the comic book series, from what I read. Now, I have not read the uh, the novels, the the rise of the governor, and all these different all the different novels there are. There's a good amount out there, like three now or two, and a third one's going to be coming out fairly soon, I think. I haven't read any of those, but um, comparing this kind of development to the comic book series, there's really no comparison. In the comic book series, the governor was basically just evil because he is. Um, in the TV series. You know, we get to see a lot more from him. We get to see uh, why he, well, not really why he does what he does, but we get to see what, what matters to him, what matters after all of these things have happened with Woodbury. Um, we get to see what he is without that. And then, of course, he sort of gets a bit of his humanity back with finding these uh, this little small group uh, with the women uh, and his sort of 
replacement daughter for Penny, uh, Megan. So, um, very interesting, interesting stuff for the series. I'll be, I'll, next week's episode, I'm still thinking for the mid-season finale, which would be episode 8, that, um, that we're going to see him attack the prison. I, I think it's going to happen, still. Um, and I think next week's episode is going to be mostly about um, him sort of finding Martinez's group and spending a little bit of time with them, maybe some time skips in between that of at least a couple weeks to a month, uh, and then have uh, him somehow take the reins from Martinez, either kill him or something. It'd be strange to see that Martinez would let him join the group, but I guess, yeah, I mean, it would be, but it's kind of like... Um, he did help out Martinez too, I would think, at the start, you know, because he brought him into Woodbury and he 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 showed him the whole uh, their techniques of of stealing from people and all these different kinds of things, which he obviously has continued to do, uh, even with the pit where they would, uh, you know, where the governor trips into, where they have the walkers that are falling into it, and uh, some some great kill scenes there. I really like my favorite zombie kill of the week would have to be, I think, the one where he grabs a zombie on the throat and just squeezes really hard and like like rips it right out. <laughs> or the bone one where he gets the bone and then he, he rips the zombie's head off. I think the I think the throat one would be the best kill. But um, very, very different stuff, very interesting stuff and uh, definitely a unique episode. There's n there is not another episode in The Walking Dead like this one. This one is completely fresh where we get to see totally concentrated on the governor when he has nothing like at this stage and at this point when he literally he doesn't have Woodbury anymore he doesn't have you know all these soldiers with him all these characters he's not really safe and secure he's basically by himself um, you know all shaggy and the whole bit and uh, finds a reason to uh, to keep going with those characters find some ambition I really like the way David Morrissey played it throughout the episode too where at the beginning there's a, there's a, a lot of, of sh uh, shift throughout the episode from the beginning where he he basically can't even hardly move like he he's lost he's lost the will to live almost entirely he's got no ambition to even speak or move around or do almost anything and then of course this uh, this group gives him uh, a purpose so to speak as they uh, they go on their uh, travel or whatever they're going to be doing um, I mean it would make sense too if if the dad did die there they wouldn't want to stay there. They would want to leave and find another place. Doesn't matter where it is. They would want to uh, want to do that. Uh, some pretty good uh, horror type scenes. Which one thing about this season, man, it really sort of has analyzed and gotten back into what the series is supposed to be, which is that it's it's a zombie apocalypse. It's a horror genre. It's you know it's a thriller type genre. And a lot of times in season, I want to say season two and season three, we kind of lost that. You know, in, in season four, we're getting a lot of these really dark scenes where they're going through buildings and stuff like this. The governor too, and you've got uh, different walkers around, and um, you know, it's it's really dark, and, and the sound is really, you know, it's 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 got that horror feel that we really lost in the first, uh, I think, or in the, the second two seasons. Um, which is cool to see again. I like the walker in the bathtub with the uh, the thing now. I, when I first saw that, I thought that uh, that walker had tried to commit suicide because there was a gun in the tub, and it looked like to me it, it had somehow shot itself. But then the governor said that uh, actually Tara had shot it and blown it blown it apart, but didn't destroy the brain. It's funny that they would survive all that time and not know that you have to destroy the brain to stop it. But you know, females that are panicking, and she wasn't even a real cop as she she said at the end as well too so that was all cool i really like the uh, the scenes the different uh, scenery environment um buildings things like that apartment building um very fresh from what we're used to and, and got these characters that are basically kind of similar to morgan in some ways where they're just they're just buckled down inside this building and they just keep quiet and let the walkers just pass and, and that's basically it and just survive that way so very interesting episode um really liked all this development for the governor. It's the most, I mean, I think this is this episode right here shows the most uh, concentration on the governor of any episode we've had in The Walking Dead. Even if you compare it to the introductory episode, this one here, I mean, from the beginning to the end, we focus 100% on the, uh, on the governor. I'm surprised what they didn't do is they didn't cut up the scenes and show them 
as parts of other episodes. They saved it all to put it in all uh, at once, which uh, I don't know if that was necessarily a good choice or a bad choice. I kind of liked it because he kind of appears out of nowhere at the end of episode five. But at the same time, I kind of feel like um, maybe the way it was shot that they they kind of intended, maybe at the beginning intended to, uh, you know, like put in those scenes in some of the earlier episodes because of the chronological order of the way they've, they've done it. Maybe that's not true, though. Maybe they didn't. But it it was a great episode. I really enjoyed it a lot. I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. I can't really give it higher than that. It You know, this episode is one that it depends entirely on how you feel about the governor uh, as a character. If, if you like the character, then you're going to love the episode. If you hate the character, you're probably going to hate the episode because it's all there is is his development. But I do think he's a great villain. I think that uh, his motivations at this point are really different. And, and you almost have to question that would at this point right now where, where he's at the end of this episode, would he even really care about Michonne? I mean, when Megan's asking him the questions and that kind of stuff, I mean, it kind of seems like, yeah, he would because of what she took away. But he burns the picture. He kind of sheds the whole thing, kind of disgusted with himself, um, folds the picture over so he doesn't have to look at himself. All these different uh, types of things makes a promise to, to Megan at the end. So um, I'm really interested to see next week's episode and how they tie this back into the character's at the prison and uh, how how he reacts to Martinez having his own group and being in charge of that group now and uh, what happens uh, uh, with that. So some very interesting developments like I said um, the predictions video will be up uh, tomorrow the 18th and I think that's about um, everything I want to say for the most part for the episode. It was a very interesting episode. It was very unique. It was uh, special if you're a fan of the governor. I'm really happy with it because I've been dying to see what happened to him after uh, ever since the season three finale uh, when he basically disappears. I've been just dying to see everything afterwards. Uh, and now that he's found a will to live again, um, what's he going to do from here on out? Well, we know he's we know he returns to the prison. So why and uh, what's he going to do? Very interesting stuff. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought about the episode. 100% Governor episode. What you think is going to happen next week. Let's talk about it. Let's do some discussion. And that's pretty much uh, all i got to say. So I'll call it here. That's it for this video, guys. I'll see you for the next one. This is Trev. I'm saying peace.